Hi, my name is Paweł Spychalski and today let's continue with the how to set up INAV on the 5-inch quad. In the previous episode we covered pit tuning, configuration, presets, mixers, serial ports and stuff like that. Today let's move forward to the receiver and mode. First, the receiver tab. The receiver tab is not, well, very very big tab because uh, usually you even do not have to change anything on this tab at all. It allows you to configure how your receiver is um, understood by the INAV. So let's begin with the channel map. Channel map is the information on which first four channels you have the ailerons, elevator, throttle and rudder. The default setup, the default channel layout is uh, Roll on the channel number one, elevator pitch on channel number two, throttle on third, and the rudder yaw on fourth. If you want to be, let's say, do not have a problems with that and you have a radio that allows you to change the channel map, always use your radio to use this mapping, AETR. If you do not want to do as for a reason or you cannot do it for a reason, then you can choose any other layout channel of the first four channels. This is very important. The roll pitch, yaw and throttle has to be on the first four channels. It has to be like that. You can actually type T-E-R-A because why not? Those are four letters that you can arbitrarily set on for. But still, I really suggest to sticking with the defaults, with the Aileron Elevator Throttle Rudder and set up your radio to match this channel. Next, RSSI channel. RSSI channel is used only when you are injecting your RSSI into one of the channels where the max channel value around 2000 is the 100% of the RSSI and the 1000 on the channel in the microseconds in the zero RSSI. If, you're, if you have a separate RSSI like the analog input or different way of injecting RSSI into INAV, you don't have to set it, but if for example you have XM plus I think it's, yes, I think it's an XM plus receiver with the RSSI on channel 16, then just select channel 16 or you can make your OpenTX inject the RSSI on any channel you want. If you want to have this functionality, you can use it by selecting this here. Throttle, usually do not have to absolutely do anything about uh, those settings in besides. If you want to have like very cool freestyle experience and a good radio that's not like jumping around the middle like this gizzled thing I have over here, you can set dead band to zero. If not, or you just don't care about super freestyle, leave it at zero and verify that the RCO Expo is at 0.7. By default, the INAF uses the Expo of 0.2 but the presets for the 5 inch override this to 0.7. If you are flying something bigger like let's say 9-10 inch then 0.2 is a good option but if you have fast and agile 5-6-7 inch then go with 0.7 it will give much better the, the yo experience. Because we are setting INAF on the multi-rotor there is no manual flight mode at all so no matter what you're gonna type in the manual rc expo and the manual rco expo it will be absolutely absolutely ignored and now let's go to the modes mode setup is let's say very personal thing so i cannot just give you a, a mode setup that you want to you should use but there are so this is really up to you but there are some let's say constraints that we have to remember about when setting a modes and uh, and some things that you should not never do. First of all, um, it's a very good option to use arm on a switch. You do not want to arm with your sticks. Besides, in the INAF 2.2, this option will be absolutely gone and you will not be able to arm with your sticks combination. So you have to assign one channel as the arming channel. And uh, on top of that, if you want to use the post hold 
or RTH or the waypoints, you have to have both magnetometer and the GPS configured. If you don't do it, if you don't have magnetometer and GPS, though flight modes that are using GPS or magnetometer will not be available to you. For example, if I want to use NAV post hold on the channel, let's say, which channel do I have assigned? Um, I don't remember, let me check which channels I do have. So, oh, channel 7. So, if I want to have a NAV post hold on the channel 7, I also have to make sure that the NAV post hold is not enabled when I'm arming. Because look what happens. If I set NAV post hold theoretically to be enabled right now, A, it's gray because it will not trigger as long as you are not armed in the air and do not have the fix, but also doing something like this will cause the navigation is not safe message, always. Your modes, GPS related modes, cannot be enabled before arming. So this is, this is something very important to remember. They cannot be on the default positions of the stick. You have to enable them after taking on. And well, yeah, what else? It's really like, like I said, it's really personal preference what you put over there. I'm personally flying mostly in the acro mode and the acro mode is a mode where not angle or horizon on position hold is enabled. It's the mode when you the mode where you control the rotation speed with the sticks, not the angle which let's be honest when flying FPV is rather a very bad idea. The only the only the only logical case for using angle or horizon is flying line of sight without FPV. If you have FPV, just ignore that either angle or horizon even exists. And uh, the rest is really, really up to you only. You cannot try to enable the GPS related flight mode with, before arming and uh, always use arming mode to arm with a switch, never Really, it's not advised to use stick arming and soon it will be not even possible with INAV 2.42. I will also not describe all the modes because there are just uh, too, too many of them. Uh, all the modes should be described in the INAV wiki and choose whatever you want. Oh, by the way, one more thing I, I forgot to mention. NAV post hold also triggers the alt hold. This means that there is always a 3D position hold. You cannot hold position without holding the altitude. So if right now I will try to enable in the flight NAV post hold, it will also try to hold altitude. But if I will only try to enable alt hold without alt hold, like oh, channel 7, uh, without post hold, it will only hold altitude, not the positions. And of course, you have to have both magnetometer and GPS configured for any of those modes like the post hold, RTH, waypoints, home reset, G GCS, NAV and, and stuff like that enabled. Okay, that's all for today. In the next episode, we will take a very short and brief look at the failsafe configuration. Until the next one. Bye-bye.